Up until now, we have become used to the range of Victron Energy battery monitors, with the shunt near the batteries and a remote display cable to the shunt. The new Smart Shunt. This is the 1000 amp model and is a reduced cable alternative to the BMV712 for example. The Smart Shunt is equipped with Bluetooth, a VE Direct port and an auxiliary port for monitoring a second battery using a temperature sensor or monitoring a set of batteries midpoint voltage. There are two other models available, the popular 500 amp and a higher 2000 amp for bigger systems. The shunt is the same size as the BMV range sizes, but instead of the side printed circuit board, there is a fully enclosed board with external connectors. Also included in the box are two positive red cables with one amp slow blow fuses. I'll connect one of the ferrule pins into the voltage battery plus terminal on the shunt. The other end of the cable has an M8 ring terminal already fitted, so I'll connect that to the positive terminal of the battery. It's vital to pass all negative power through the shunt. A popular mistake is to still have other wires to MPPTs or boilers left connected to one of the battery bank's negative ports. If the power doesn't pass through the shunt, it can't measure it, and therefore your readings will be wrong. So all DC loads and charge sources must be connected after the smart shunt. I'll connect a negative cable from the battery to the M10 battery minus side of the shunt. The load negative will connect to the load minus of the shunt. This is another popular mistake where the shunt itself is often wired in reverse, so make sure you get this correct. If your system includes a GX device such as a Serbo, Colour Control or a Venus GX, you can connect a VE Direct cable to the white port on the side of the smart shunt. The GX device can then read all the battery's parameters either locally on a device screen or remotely via the internet on VRM. Once the smart shunt has been connected, the Bluetooth light will start to blink on the side of the shunt. Let's connect using the Victron Connect app. Once installed, the smart shunt will appear in the device list. Click on the smart shunt. The shunt will require a pin code to connect. The default is 000000. 000, 000, 000, 000. Once you connect to the smart shunt, you'll see the Bluetooth light on the side of the shunt stays lit. After you have made a Bluetooth connection, the default pin needs to be changed. It is recommended to do that now, however, you can change it later from the product info tab. Although the smart shunt will show values such as voltages and state of charge, we need to change the default lead acid settings, in this case, to AGM. It's important to check your battery manufacturer for your own battery settings. I'll click on the cog at the top right of the screen. Then from the settings screen, battery. I'll enter the total of all my battery amp hours. In this instance, as there is only one battery, I'll change this to 110 amp hours. There are many other settings you can change, depending on what type of battery you have. At the bottom of this page, you can select the smart shunt to reset to 100% state of charge if the power is disconnected and manually set the current state of charge. There are two buttons at the bottom of this page. If required, you can manually synchronise the smart shunt to 100%. This is typical when you first install the system and you know the batteries are 100% full. If during the install there is a discrepancy between no load and what the smart shunt is displaying, you can calibrate it using the last button in this list. On the main screen you can see the battery state of charge in a percentage, the battery voltage, the current going into the battery which is displayed in amps, or the current load of the battery displayed in negative amps, also the power's charge or load wattage. The consumed amp hours increases and decreases as a charge is put into the battery or a load is taken out of it. The time remaining is calculated depending on what setting you have set in battery settings, discharge floor. 
In this instance, it will show the time it takes using this load to discharge to 50% of my battery capacity. If, for example, you had lithium batteries, this floor setting could be as low as, say, 20% and the battery remaining figure would be higher. If you select the History tab at the top of the screen, you can see the historic details for things like an average discharge, the amount of energy discharged and charged, the number of cycles your batteries have completed, and voltages and alarms. When selecting the Trends tab, you can pinpoint an exact current usage or see how an item behaves over time. You can plot two graphs using the drop-down menus. We can see the trending data for voltage, current, power, consumed amp hours, the state of charge and temperature. You can zoom in and out using the magnifying glass at the bottom left and pause the graph for a more detailed view. As the smart shunt doesn't have a separate monitor, it does not have a relay or an audible alarm. Although you can go to settings, alarm and set parameters for an alarm to be notified in the Victron Connect app when connected via Bluetooth or via a Venus GX device. You can also use the temperature sensor for BMV accessory. I'll remove the single red power cable. Instead, the temperature sensor connects to both the VBAT positive and the AUX terminals on the smart shunt. Then, within the miscellaneous menu, you can change the AUX input to temperature. The temperature of the connected battery will be displayed on the main screen. If you have other Victron products, such as an MPPT, you can use the VE Smart Networking feature to allow the devices to wirelessly connect and exchange information between each other. The smart shunt can share the battery voltage and temperature if you've installed the optional temperature sensor accessory. In the settings menu, I can select VE Smart Networking. As no networks have been created yet, I click Create Network. I can enter a network name and it will be saved and configured. I click the OK button. In this instance, this is now broadcasting its parameters on the network called Victron. If you go to an MPPT, for example, I can go to its VE Smart Networking settings page and join existing. In the list, I select the network called Victron, then OK. The Smart Shunt and the MPPT are connected, and the MPPT can optimise its charge parameters depending on the most accurate battery voltage available, and if installed, its temperature. In the description below, there's a link to a manual detailing all the smart shunt settings and options, as well as wiring diagrams how best to wire your batteries, monitor a second battery such as an engine starter, or monitor midpoint voltage of a battery bank. So that's the new smart shunt. Fewer cables, Bluetooth and VE direct connections, and easier to install.